Welcome back to another episode of the Overcomfort Podcast with Jenica Lopez, me as your host. I'm so thankful and honored that you guys are here listening and watching from whatever platform you guys are on. I'm super excited for today's episode. I'm excited for all the episodes for this season, but it's because I have a lot of special guests. Mm -hmm. Today's special guest is Jose Bay. Woo! Yay! Hi, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here. He is also a TikTok sensation. He is from Minnesota. He loves social media. He's a he's a dad. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's a you have a brother? Your brothers? Yeah. You have so siblings? I have I have um one bro one brother and then I have two sisters. Um so I'm the youngest out of everyone. My oldest brother, he is I think almost going to be in his 30s and my oldest sister is I believe 30 32 33. I'm not sure. I'm really uh, bad with you birthdays. You have a lot of siblings. Yeah, and then my little sister, I call her my little sister, but she's 26. She has down syndrome, Aww. but uh, she still lives at home with us, so she's that. always with us, but those are like the only siblings that I have. So you just moved to LA. Yeah, I just right? moved officially, to LA. Officially, every, yeah. like we could say that you are officially in LA. Mm -hmm. You grew up in Minnesota, so like mm -hmm. how's the how's the change been? How's the culture shock? What do you feel? Do you feel any difference between Minnesota and LA? Mm -hmm. So I've been to LA previously, like the last time I was here was in 2021, and that was just for vacation. But now, like fully, fully moving here, it's been so, 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 so like surreal. Like it still hasn't hit because like you know like i grew up watching like you guys like i would sit with my mom and we would watch like i love jenny and it's just so crazy now like being here Aww. like sitting with you and so it just like hasn't hit to me that i'm like living in la that i'm like sitting filming a podcast with jenica Aww. and like it's just so crazy like it's just so crazy like it still hasn't hit to me like i still don't feel like i'm here like i still like it just feels like a dream that i'm gonna wake up and then yeah i don't know oh you're so, so cute <laughs> i love it so have you had any challenges like what has been like the challenge so far? Because you've lived in LA for like a good two weeks now. What do you feel like has been the hardest part already? <clears throat> Honestly, uh, I've been feeling that like really, really homesick. Like I miss my family and, you know, like moving across like across the country, like to a place where you don't have family. It has been really, really challenging. And I feel like even like getting up and like wanting to film content or getting up and like wanting to like, you know, like I used to have like a routine and now just not having a routine. It's just been like really, really like not overwhelming, but like different, you know, like right. it's a whole different vibe. Um, but I've been trying to work on that and just like having like you and like Val and Omi, I feel like I have a family here. So Aww. now I've been kind of getting more like, like um comfortable living here knowing that i'm not like alone and of course i have shorty and i have omi val Aww. orlando and my girlfriend val so <laughs> it's just been it's just been like it's been nice like having people that like i can like talk to or like knowing that i can go to their house like whenever so that's just been really 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 nice like just having that support here you're always welcome my love um okay so you came to la to chase your dreams right obviously with social media how is what's the difference between chasing your dreams here and in minnesota um so there's really no opportunities out like in minnesota like it's really mostly all like farm like we don't have mountains we don't have a beach we're known for lakes but like it's mostly really cold so we have like all four seasons so we really don't have like as many opp opportunities like we don't have many clubs as there is here um we do have clubs but it's more like you know like those sit down bars where like mm -hmm. the rich like white people will sit down and like order a drink so there, we really don't have like as many things as there is here like events uh like brand like festivals like all these things that go on here like we don't have like going on in minnesota so i feel like um out here there's much more opportunities like there's so many like people and so many connections out here that i feel like we don't have out in minnesota so a lot of people like come out to la like to chase their dreams either la or new york i feel right because like. it's definitely la is definitely new york is more business like more like someone like trying to raise a grow a business but mm -hmm. in la it's like more influencers actors dancers For all sure. that stuff so i definitely understand <clears throat> why you chose to come out here so i i wouldn't have never thought like if I was in your position, I would have never thought I'd be moving to LA. Like I know. at fifteen, like think about yourself when you're fifteen. Like, what would you tell your fifteen year old self, like with these dreams and moving out here? Like, um, actually, it, when I was sixteen was when I started Musically. So right when I was fifteen, like I remember for my like fifteenth birthday, like I went to the Mall of America. That was my first time ever going there, and like. 
I always like, uh, I don't know. I like, that's kind of like a tough question, but I feel like I'd tell my like 15 year old self, um, like I was really chubby back then. So I feel like I would tell him, um, just to live your life to the fullest and just to not give a fuck about what people think, because at the end of the day, like you're going to wake up with yourself and you're going to end up like going to sleep with yourself only. So you have to learn to love yourself before you love anyone else. And for sure, like, if you want to be someone like or even just like have like a business or like have a job like i feel like you need to be happy with yourself first because if not you're just gonna go like in a hole and that's not nice and i've been through that so talking about being yourself because i i love what you said and it goes back it piggybacks onto like you being 15 and chubby and all that stuff like it took you a while to self-discover right like Mm -hmm. who you were and how you grew up and all that stuff And I think that it's amazing because you're very honest and organic in your content and what you do on TikTok. And it's fun. It's engaging. People like knowing because I think you're brave. I think you're brave for the content that you put out and also your sexuality, right? So how old were you when you discovered your sexuality and, you know, that moment for you? Mm, honestly i feel like it was really recent i know it sounds really crazy but i feel like it started like when i was 17 but like ever since i was little like i like playing with like <laughs> like with brad's dolls like with Aww, my sisters yes. like i would not like playing like with them but i really like like their hair like i always a lot of people don't know this but um i really wanted to go to school like to be like a hairdresser and also for like marketing like there was so many things that i wanted to do but like i always like playing with like little dolls hair and, like a whole bunch uh, of things uh-huh. um but yeah like like i don't know um Fuck, I forgot the question. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Like, was it hard, like, oh, discovering oh. that about yourself? No, so... Um, accepting it? No, so I feel like there was little things that I would do, like, here and there that were, like, that weren't manly, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. But, um, like, out in Minnesota, like, that isn't really common, like, to see guys with nails or to see guys, like, with a tank top or to see guys with a crop top. Um, I mean, here and there, but, like, out here in LA, there's so many, like, drag queens, so many, like, gay mm-hmm. clubs, so many things, like, that there is. It's more... Accepting. yeah for sure for sure so i feel like it's easier for people out here well i'm not gonna say easier but i feel like it's more known out here versus in minnesota i feel like it was hard for me because not seeing all like i feel like i wouldn't see as many gay people so it was kind of like maybe i was like like i feel like i shouldn't be that way or maybe i'm like mm-hmm. you know so like i feel like when i was like um 19 or 18 i had like my first like my first like fling i'd say with someone oh uh, that was a guy um but, like, before that, like, I was never, like, in a relationship with, like, like, a guy. I mean, I did, like, think some were cute, but I never, like, had the guts to, like, be in a relationship. So, I feel like fully, fully, like, I feel like I, like, came out, like, in, when I was, like, 19. Mm-hmm. But even to this day, it might sound really, really crazy. Like, really, really crazy. But I I still think that, like, not still think, but, like, I feel like I'm bi. Like, mm-hmm. it's just, like, a weird feeling. Like, mm-hmm. like I don't know. I'm just really into girls. Like, it's like into girls that are like like really 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 like like fine like my fa- like do you have like a type let me ask jenna this real quick let me switch it up i, I just really want to know like do you have a type i feel like i'm very picky with my type mm-hmm. like they have to be tall like i don't know my friends always tell me i'm picky about it but i'm very specific like you have to be tall kind of with the beard you know clean cleaned up i don't know that's a good question <laughs> oh my god but okay, so you feel like you could be bi, and that's totally fine. Yeah. Like I dated a girl once. Really? I did. <gasps> I dated a girl once for a long time, but it was more because of like an emotional attachment. Because yeah. I was, it was right after my mom had passed away, and I just needed somebody. And that person, she was very like her dad had passed away, so I felt like I needed. She understood who I was, and it then was a connection. It was more of a connection. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It was obviously after that like the physical attraction came up and all that stuff but it was very emotional Mm -hmm. and i was in a very vulnerable spot so i get what you mean now i don't i'm not interested or looking at girls i do want to have a husband and kids and stuff like that um so i get what you mean about like discovering yourself in that sense did you ever feel like any like you were scared or like worried because of coming out And if you did, like, how did you work through them? Honestly, it wasn't that I was scared, like, of coming out. Because at the end of the day, like, I really didn't, like, have any friends in high school. So, like, I wasn't really scared of what they would think. Because, like, I would, like, always sit in the library. But, like, um, I was just scared of my parents. Like, I was really, really scared of, like, coming out. Because I was, like, they're going to be like, 
Right. Uh, like, I was just really scared. Like they're Hispanic, mm -hmm. right? So they're so, a lot more tough. Yeah. So like it's really really scary. Like especially like I feel like a lot of people can relate. Like if you have like come out like to your mom, especially like in the Hispanic community. Like especially in the older generations, I feel like, mm -hmm. um, and especially like living in a conservative like state like that, I feel like a lot of Mexican parents like won't accept you this and that. Yeah. But um. To me, like, that was, like, the scariest thing ever. I was, like, like they're not going to want me here. So that's why I feel like it took me forever to actually, like, realize what I wanted. Because, like, I always, like, a lot of people always tell me that I like satisfying people a lot. Like, I always, like, like want to make sure that everyone's, like, um, like, how do you say it? I feel like, like, I always think about others before I think about myself. Mm -hmm. So I was always thinking, like, oh, like, I don't want my mom. Yes, person. Like, you say yes to anything. Yeah. I, I need to stop doing that because my mom told me to stop. Like, she's noticed <laughs> that. And I'm a really giving person, too. But, like, like uh, I was just really scared to tell my mom. And, uh, like, I was just scared of her reaction. And maybe she wasn't going to want me anymore. Like, I don't know. It was just a scary feeling. So I feel like that's why it took forever to, like, for me to actually fully, like, know what I want. Only because of, like, my mom. And, right. Like, yeah. Did you have a support system? I do you have a support system like at, because of because of you're gay or bi like did you feel like you didn't or did you have people that supported you because you know obviously it was hard with like your family and stuff like that but like did you have a support system that let you know that it was okay um not really so this is actually really really crazy and it's gonna sound really sad <laughs> but like <clears throat> like i was telling you guys like i didn't have like any friends like in high school so i really didn't have like anyone like there like to talk to or like to let know like my feelings so a lot of people don't know but like the reason why i gained weight and this is gonna go a little bit like no, across the question but like it. i like would all those feelings that i was feeling like about like gay this and that like i would eat my feelings like out instead of like mm -hmm. crying it out since i didn't have anyone to talk to i would to. do that yes. i would do that when my mom and dad passed away like i would just eat eat, yeah. eat eat like i would eat tacos like my mom would take me to mcdonald's and i would get like five mcchickens extra mayonnaise like i would do like a big like sprite like that big and i would chug everything down and like that i would just eat my feelings and like uh i feel like that was one of the reasons too like since i didn't have like anyone there for me like a support system like i feel like i would just eat my feelings away and like even to this day like i still struggle like there'll be times where i like want to eat when i have a lot of anxiety but like um i feel like now it's different because i have like friends i have you guys i have like people that i can talk to and there's been times to where like you can even ask like jenica like i've talked to you guys like only because like it's kind of hard because I don't want to tell my like my mom even if it, it's not even like about like telling my mom but it's just that I don't want to worry her because she has her own things and like I don't want her to be like oh like my son's out in LA and he's all worried or oh like my son's here in Minnesota and he's going through things because I know she's going through things herself like my mom has to take care of my sister with Down syndrome like 24 7 like she can't really even go out like to the mall to the grocery store because like it's like a whole deal with her so I don't want to like add more stress on top of that so I always like to figure things out like on my own um only because like I just don't want her to feel like really overwhelmed you remind me a lot of me when I was younger because after my mom had passed away, like I felt like for me, I had to be very strong for my siblings because everybody else was really broken and hurt and stuff like that. So I get what you mean of like being independent, not asking for help, like figuring things out on your own. Mm -hmm. So like that's very brave of you and very like honorable. But I, m even to myself, like we both kind of have to we both kind of have to accept like it's okay to ask for help you yeah. know and like really allowing people to come in and like cater us because if not then we're just gonna grow up and then we're gonna be bitter and yeah. look at people and be like like no one was there to help me or you know but that's also because we didn't allow people you yeah. get what i mean um so now that you know obviously discovering self your sex sexuality like how has it shaped how you look at life like now in relationships and personal like for yourself like what are your goals now that you know this about yourself or you're still discovering self which is fine but like what's like a personal goal for yourself like in the future like do you want to like for example like mm, let's see what's a good example like how 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 has it changed how you look at at life like like you're not bitter about being gay right or no. like looking at people and you're not disgusted like or in other words like you're not homophobic of being gay right no so that's what i mean like you see someone you want someone to be as comfortable as you like yeah. understand you and kind of see your backgrounds and stuff right yeah i love that 
it's yeah. been it has been really weird though like it like like i said in minnesota we didn't really have all that mm -hmm. so like coming out here and like i've met like so many so many people that are trans so many like gay people and like believe it or not like back in minnesota i've never never met someone that's trans i've seen a couple people but like out here like it, i even like i've been to clubs and like i'll see girls and i'll think that they're like like they just look so 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 pretty <laughs> and like they'll be like i'm trans and i'm like <gasps> like i just can't <laughs> believe it and it's just like it's really really like like it's just like a new thing out here so like even like my first first ever like club uh, it was the event that melody invited me to and i went with alan and a couple other people so we went to clubs after that and i was introduced to a like a, we went to like the gay clubs and that was my first first right. time ever going so like even like meeting like all these gay people all these trans people all these like queer people like it was just so 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 like like it, not and it's not in a bad way but like it was a lot because like just meeting all these people and like they can be and like express themselves like so much it was just like so much for me like to see and i was like like damn like a lot of people don't know that they can be themselves and like be happy so it was just like a lot at first like to even like meeting all these people like like they're just really out there they're really like i feel like they're really extra too yeah so like I feel I felt like too like really overwhelmed. I was like maybe I have to be like them because they'd be like oh like you're really shy, you're really quiet. But like I'm just not used to that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was just kind of hard for me too to be like out there. But I'm working on it. I'm working That's on good. it for sure. Do you ever feel like you don't belong like in like in the community or? in your family specifically um in the community for sure like even to this day like i'm like like maybe that's why like i'm still having those like second thoughts but like i'm still like like oh like do i fit in like i don't know because like i'll be hanging out with like all these people who are like trans or like gay and they're just really out there and really extra and like i just can't like force myself to be like really extra and really like bubbly and happy and like because like i'm just not like that and i feel like i was just raised like in a really conservative place that i'm still like in i feel like i'm still in that little like hole Bubble. you know mm -hmm. so like but i feel like with time like i feel like i'll be more out there I'll, feel, I'll be more talkative like i don't know i'm just like a really really shy person like kept like together so i don't know it's just it's just been like tough a little bit but i i feel like i'll eventually get there for sure i love that well you're accepted here you're accepted in my house in my, <laughs> in my bubble and i don't ever want you to feel like you're not accepted like even la i feel like people like i said it's more accepting mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i think as time goes on obviously like your family and stuff like i just want you and other viewers as well to like feel like you have a sense of belonging don't let it change who you are because in some people i i heard it on another podcast or show where it's like you internally are homophobic because you hate the way you feel about guys or girls or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's why I'm saying like, you know what? Let's F it. Like, forget it. I'm going to be who I am on social media at home. I'm going to, you know, obviously be respectful, you know, because sure, yeah. there's some people like in public and all that, that don't, that don't like it. And that's fine. Not everyone's going to accept it, mm -hmm. but as long as you yourself accept it and for love sure. yourself and like, you know, for who you are and your body and all that stuff. Um, all right. We're going to go on a quick break, but we'll be right back to talk about t TikTok and Shoddy Bay and how they met and all that good stuff. Mm. All right. We're back. So you've grown so much on TikTok and you've made a name for yourself. How does your mom and dad feel about all this success? Like, was it like crazy to them or... Mm, at first they didn't understand it i mean they're not familiar with tiktok literally like a couple weeks ago before i left i had to help them like install the app and everything because they're not really familiar with all that like i'm saying like they're mexican they were born in the 60s so they're really really old not, not really old <laughs> but like my mom was really pretty my dad too but i'm saying like and they're like in an old era so Generation, they're not yeah, yeah for sure so they're not like really familiar with all of this but um once they started like when i sent her the video chiki's made a video for my mom and like i said she loves like i remember on, on tiktok live i showed jenica like my mom has this whole collection of like jenny rivera like wine yeah and like tequila and then not wine but yeah. tequila <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, wine's a good idea though <laughs> no and then uh she has like a whole bunch of like she has the b bella like big pr box that i got her for christmas and like Aww yeah so she's just like a big fan so when she saw that from cheekies like i feel like that's when she's like okay like my son's really like like out there for a reason you know and like it's still like really crazy for her and she'll call me every day and like at first she was really like i know some of you guys if you guys watch my tiktok live like at first she was really like no like you're not gonna go like this and that she was just really worried for me just letting like her baby that she grew up with every day because we were mm -hmm. together every day like we would mm -hmm. go out to eat to the mall because like she didn't have anyone else i mean she had my sister but like she can't yeah, really do those things with different. her um so like me when we out here like i feel like 
now she understands like now she'll call me every day and be like oh what did you do like how's it going this and that but like uh now i try to call her as much as i can every day because i remember you told me too like you could give anything to like pick up the phone and call your mom so like i still take that like into consideration like i'll call my mom and i'll be talking to her like for an hour but like now she like truly truly understands like i'm out here like for a reason that's good though that's good and okay so you started tiktok right Mm -hmm. you started tiktok but you started because of shoddy or or you like because you guys are best friends and you guys are like, was it meant for you to sound like shoddy or how did that come up? Because a lot of people say like, oh, it's like, it's funny that you copy her, that you talk like her, mm-hmm. right? So like, how did, how did that all start? So I don't even know. <laughs> like how we met or like how like the voice started? How you met and how the voice started. Okay. Yeah. So we met in Musical.ly like in 2016. Uh, back then I had like a really old account in Musical.ly. I would do like, if you guys remember Musical.ly, like the phone thing, it was like so embarrassing. But I remember I did a duet with Shorty. Like this is before she met PewDiePie, like before her fame, before everything. Aww. And we did a duet with each other. And I remember I had like 15, 15K. And um, and what's it called? I duetted her video. And then I remember that uh, we like gave each other's numbers like through messages. And this was back like in 2017. Oh, um and then i remember we met up in 2019 we couldn't meet up as often because like her mom like you guys can ask already like her mom didn't really like her like hang out with guys especially one that she doesn't know um so it was really hard for us to hang out as often especially like with her disability too like i feel like her mom would be really like you know i feel like anyone's mom like just meeting up with a stranger that you met through social media Mm -hmm. um so it was really hard for us to hang out but we would like face them every day we would play Fortnite. but um (laughs) she eventually like we started growing on musically but i stopped i stopped yeah you guys can still find my old account i think but like i stopped because in high school a bunch of people would bully me because like i was really really fat so people would just bully me so i just stopped social media and i started back in 2020 social media but then that's when i met up with shoddy like for the first time ever to go pick up her dog vaquita that's where vaquita love came from um i went to her house in minnesota where her old place and i met her brother her mom wasn't home and I remember she went live and she showed me on her live and that was like my biggest way ever. I was like 255 and this was in 2020 guys. And like she showed me on live and then I remember like the comments were like, oh my God, he should get a bra. Like he has like, I used to have like really, really big cherries guys. Uh-huh. You can believe it or not. Thank God I don't have loose skin, but like I used to have like really big cherries and like people would make fun of me. So I stopped social media. You guys can even actually like I stopped social media. Like I stopped everything only because a lot of people can say like, oh, don't let the comments get to you, this and that. And but but they do. They do eventually like like and especially to me, like I I used to be really, really confident when I was really big. Like I used to be really confident. I used to like not give a fuck what people think. And now like I do. I try not to. But like I like when I when I read comments, like it'll still like kind of be like, damn, like maybe I should like fix myself. But like at the end of the day, like I feel like they're just people and they're just like commenting with a blank profile. So like now I just don't give a fuck because comments people are always going to hate. Yep, exactly. But, um, and it's crazy because you mentioned that you were bullied a lot, like in high school and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And it's like, look at you now. Yeah. Like they would make fun of you for any little thing. And now yeah. like you're this crazy sensation. Yeah. So how did the voice come up? Like, how so, did you, how did that stuff come about? <laughs> so the voice came up only because like, I feel like it's really stick. Like when you hear Shadi like saying how you are, like even a lot of people like about like, what the hell? Like, I feel like it's really like, it sticks to you. So I just started like going on live with her, like on TikTok a couple months ago. They're like two months ago. Cause that's when I started like TikTok, TikTok officially. And I'd be like, Shadi, how you are? Like, what are you doing? Like, uh, see you never like in this view and like all this stuff so i would just like talk like that and it just stuck and people liked it like obviously like not like a bullying way or anything but like it was just like funny and like if shorty had a problem with that i feel like she would have told me like hey like stop but like it it was just funny and now i just like make like my own words now now i'm like like leg out and like this and that so now i feel like it just changed like into a whole nother thing but like i feel like when you stick with people like a lot of people like on tiktok were telling me like oh you're copying alan you're copying like all these people like with the ad because remember i had that for a while so like i feel like when you hang out with like people like it sticks to you you know so i feel like it stuck to me and like yeah it wasn't anything like to make fun of her or nothing like that you guys like and it's honestly it really is contagious because i'll be catching myself and i'll be like oh my (laughs) oh no oh no thank you (laughs) ah no thank you (laughs) Uh, no thank you okay you guys are best friends. You and Shadi, right? Bestest friends. How do you guys separate from your relationship, your your friendship, and like obviously your guys' work relationship? Now it's not work because you guys are still the same person, but do you guys feel like you have to have like a boundary right there? Like between TikTok and your guys' friendship? Like certain limits? Limits as in like what? Like, like 
say like you know something and she knows something about you like you guys don't share that on live because mm -hmm. you guys want to have loyalty in like, oh yeah for sure like there's been a lot of things that like i've known like about like shawty and she knows about me like for so many years and like a lot, like a lot of people still don't know it and i feel like that's why we've, we've maintained like our, our friendship for like seven years now because like we've never like spilled like each other's tea like we know like our boundaries and we know the limit and if we ever have like an issue with it like we'll communicate it with each other like hey like why would you say that on live or like hey next time like can you not say that like mm -hmm. that ass because there's a limit and i feel like we've had like that connection especially me like not growing up with friends like like and growing up with shorty i feel like i was always like able to vent to her like there's been so many times guys like i was in a relationship back in like 2018 it was like a so much like childish relationship and shorty knows who <clears throat> let's not say but um <laughs> but like i caught her crying and like i would vent to her and she would always be there for me so she knows like so much things about me and i know so many things about her but we know our limit and especially with work and especially now too like now that we're in like a whole different environment um that we're like more like no drama no nothing especially now like i feel like we know our limit and we know like what not to say and what to say on cameras right. and off cameras you mentioned that something about a relationship. I want to know about your love life because I don't know a lot about it. Tell me about it. Is it hard to find love? Are you specific or what's an update? Are you single? What what what's the tea? I need to know. So about my love life, guys, um, currently right now I am talking to someone, but um, I we've been keeping it private. We've been keeping it like on the low only to respect like each other's privacy, um, especially like you said, like setting those boundaries with work yeah. and like on social media. It's scary because um, people like can make assumptions off like a three minute live off of like a post off of this off of that. Mm -hmm. So we just have to keep like our like our private life like off of social media at first. We would always be live and always saying like our things, but we eventually noticed that we just need to like chill out and just like keep things like off alive but for sure coming out to la like i never expected like to be in a relationship i feel like if you ever move like away out of state like i feel like you're going there for a reason and i feel like my reason was to work and not to find love and i feel like mm. There was a little time too, like even to this day, like to where I need to prioritize work and the things that I came here to do and not like love life, you know? That's true. And if there's time for it, then there's time for it. But if there's not, there's not. And I feel like it's been feeding a lot on like how I feel emotionally. And I feel like it shouldn't have, and it shouldn't be that way. Like I feel like I should like, be able to like wake up every day and like do my own thing instead of having to worry about someone else, you know? And especially too, like I feel like if you guys, this goes to everyone who's watching, and to anyone who wants to take my advice but like from everything that i've been through i feel like um definitely find someone who will give you the same energy back mm -hmm. who will give you the same attention back who will give you the same quality time back because especially out here in la a lot of people have told me a lot of my close friends that i've met have told me that it's um like you don't know what people's intentions are out here yep. especially dating someone who might have followers who might be someone out here who might be known for something you don't know what their intentions are and me that i'm barely like up there like uh like you don't know what people might be using you for if they just want this if they just want that like if they want like out or like <laughs> if they just want to use you like for something like it's scary because you truly don't know people's intentions especially out in la so now i feel like i've opened my eyes more towards what people like intentions are um especially to what you were talking to about shorty the other day too about like knowing too about like uh who might be using you like if they're exactly. like clout chasers if they're not and it's scary you guys it's truly scary like getting in a relationship um so i feel like that's why i've been doing it more off live and off um off like social media just to try it out to see what like their intentions are but i definitely say just like be careful for like because you want to be treated like if you're like a girl, you want to be treated like a princess, I'm right, sure. Exactly. And if you're a guy, like I'm sure you want to like you want your girl to be loyal to you. And I feel like that should like always be like the number one priority in a relationship. Exactly. And especially like like I'll, I, I agree a lot with what you said and like especially keeping it private because then you don't want opinions of other people mm -hmm. because then it changes. You get you take those opinions and those opinions go in like your head yeah. of what you think of people or what you think of them. And it's like, no, like I'm getting to know you for you, for who you're showing me. I'm putting this trust in you. I'm going to be loyal to you and really commit myself to for it just to just be us because in relationship it's only two people mm -hmm. unless you're in an open relationship but that that ain't no let's business. not say let's not say but <laughs> <laughs> but it is just talk it's just keeping it between you guys and like honoring the love between you two because you can't just involve anybody else you yeah know I mean? for sure so let's talk about what's next for you what it what are goals now that you're in la do you want to find your man here do you want to what do you want to do for TikTok or for your social media? Like what's your biggest, what are your goals in LA or for your, for yourself in general? 
So my goal, my main main goal in LA for sure, for sure, is just to like right now, just to build connections, um, and just to build like my like I want to make like my own like content, and I want to find like what I meant like like what my content's meant to be, you know? Because right now I, st I, I still feel like I'm trying to find like where my content goes, and I feel like that's with a lot of influencers mm -hmm. too. Like they're always like trying to find different things, trying to find something that sticks, especially like in the long run. Like you don't just don't want to fade out. Like you want to keep your audience entertained. So like I for sure just want to find like what content. Like I've been collaborating with different like influencers, and we've done different things, and I feel like people lately have been liking that type of content. So I just want to I just want to be consistent because I feel like a lot of advice that people have given me is just to be consistent always. And I feel like you can relate to that yeah, too. Like exactly. if Jenica's not active with Overcomfort and not giving you guys that like podcast tea and all that, <laughs> people are going to stop watching. They're going to find another yeah, podcast. So you just exactly. got to be consistent. So I feel like that's the main thing that I'm going to do, regardless of what content I do. I'm just going to be consistent with doing what I'm doing. And for Love Life, um, I feel like for now, I'm just going to do me and I'm just going to focus on myself because at the end of the day, um, like a lot of people don't know this, but um like i just want to do like like my own thing you know like i don't want to have to worry about like someone else because at the end of the day i feel like it's gonna drain me because when i love like a lot of people don't know but when i love like i love hard yeah. and so i don't want to be like like too worried about someone or being like oh like this person's like like you know like might be doing this at the club like this and that because i'm not i'm not toxic guys i'm not toxico but <laughs> i like i worry about like about I worry a lot about the people I love. Like, I worry about, like, Shorty. I worry about, like, Jenica. Like, I just, Aww. like I said earlier, like, I like to please people. So, like, I feel like if I get in a relationship out here, like, I'm going to be more focused on them than on my content. So, I just feel like I need to focus on my content. And if someone wants to love me, then I'll give them that, like, attention back. But, like, off, like, camera and off live when I have time. But I'm going to prioritize my work and be consistent and just, like, and just go with that. Uh, I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of how far you've come and making that brave decision to move to LA and really just making a name in your life. It's a new journey. And I think that if you have something like that in mind, you guys just do it. I think there's nothing to lose. You're only, only going to live with the fear of why didn't I do it? Mm hmm. I love that you were able to come on the podcast. Thank you so much <gasps> Thank for you being for here. I love me. having like vulnerable and deep conversations and really getting into like who you are, things that maybe people don't know about you and, you know, all that good stuff. So what's one last thing you want to tell the listeners and viewers to remember about you or advice that you may have? Um, so the advice that I would give anyone like watching is to chase your dreams. Like literally if you're right now sitting watching the podcast, of course, finish watching the video. But after that, like <laughs> if you're trying to lose weight, lose weight, because I never thought that I'd be like at the weight that I am if I wasn't consistent. If you're trying to like, uh, like fix things with your family like talk to them like just make the first move because you guys you only live once and you only have one life if you and if you live it thinking what if i do this what if i do that so like if you don't do it you just have to get up and do it and try it and if whatever happens happens so just live your life to the fullest and just like enjoy life because you only have one and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow i agree you guys that was beautiful that was a beautiful piece of advice i loved it what are your socials okay what are your next plans for yourself? Like any projects and give your social so that people can follow you and all that good stuff. So my social media for Instagram is Jose Tings, uh, T-I-N-G-Z. And then that's my Snapchat. And then you guys can find me on TikTok at Bomb Tings, B-O-M-T-I-N-G-Z. And that's so weird. That's a weird username, guys. I need to change it. I've been trying to change it. But it's because like I literally made my TikTok account like two months ago out of nowhere because I had an old one, but it got banned. So I just made like a really weird username because I, I was a fan of like this girl named Bomb. She's like a singer or whatever and so i just play like bomb teams because those 18s was taken <laughs> but that's like a weird thing i don't even know why i brought it up but you guys can follow that and then for upcoming projects like the biggest 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 one i have is probably just like um going to uh disney i'm really looking for that like, oh, look, i know yes. that's not a project but like i'm just really looking forward to like being with cheekies and shorty like i'm really excited for that and then like i hopefully 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 soon like i'm really really obsessed 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 with fragrance didn't you say like that when 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 was it like when i walked into the room like you guys always like oh my god it smells manly like it always I smells guess. yes like i love so i love good. i love fragrances like i i know that shorty talked about it too but like i really really want to start like my own fragrance line like even if it's like i've always loved men's cologne 
alone like i really want to start that soon so you guys might see that soon or you guys might see like merch like vaquita love merch Ooh. but like also can we talk about like the overcomfort candles <laughs> i walked into val's room guys when i stayed at jenica's house and i was like what does that smell and she's like it's a candle and i was like what the hell like <laughs> it lasts more than like the freaking bath and body works candles guys <laughs> You're so and it cute. smells like right now it's smelling like the whole little like uh like warehouse that we're at but like it smells so 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 good <laughs> guys you, you guys You're like so i remember cute. when i met jenica i was like jenica can you sign me one and i never ended up buying one <laughs> but guys they smell so good and i feel like you guys for sure need to go check out over comfort if you want your whole house smelling You're so good so thank you i love it and thank you for having me over jenica the- thank you for course, having me love. i feel so appreciative of you guys oh, for like giving me these opportunities i had to give you know I, I I love who I love you and I love who you are uh, and I just had to give the opportunity for you to like you know show yourself and show what you're worth and I know that you were on Alan's podcast first but that's fine because he's my friend but whatever <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and listening from wherever you guys are at make sure you guys subscribe like leave a review let us know who you guys want on the podcast next and we'll see you guys in the next episode bye Overcomfort Podcast is a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network.